Hi everyone, my name is Stephanie Hensley. I've been a shoe designer for over seven years and I found that when I first started working in the industry um, it was very difficult to get the proportions of a shoe correct and although I had experience in clothing design and I also had a background in art I found that sketching shoes was difficult when you first start out but um, in my experience I mean the saying's true, practice makes perfect. So I kept practicing every day and just kept getting better and better. Um, so I thought I'd make some tutorials for you budding shoe designers out there. I thought that it would be helpful for um, me to show you my process and hopefully that can help you get better and better at your sketching as well. I'm going to be focused on sketching women's dress shoes because that's my specialty but a lot of the tips in these tutorials will be helpful for anyone who's sketching shoes, be it men's shoes or children's shoes as well. This will be the first of three tutorials. The first tutorial will be about supplies that you'll need to start sketching. The second tutorial will be about creating a foot template to base your sketches on. And the third tutorial will be the actual sketching. If you have any questions or comments, Please leave them below and I'll try to address them as soon as I can. Okay, enjoy. Welcome to my desk. Okay, so here are the minimum amount of tools that you will need to start your shoe sketching. Um, now I have a sketchbook here, but you really only need any, any kind of white paper that is unlined. Um, so any kind of computer paper, something like that. The second thing you need is a pencil. It can be just a regular pencil. It's not a worry if you don't have anything more specific. And the third is a fine tip marker. Um, now we're going to get into specifics a little bit later, but these are definitely the things that you need. And also an eraser. Okay, so there's four things. This paper, pencil, eraser, and a fine tip marker. Okay, as far as pencils go, I tend to prefer just the regular old pencil that you probably have a million of already. Um, on this kind of pencil, the graphite is softer, so um, it's easier to erase. Whereas something like this, a mechanical or technical pencil, has such a fine tip, the graphite is very hard, and so when you erase, it really leaves a mark. So I tend to prefer this regular pencil here. Now I also suggest having one gray colored pencil. Um, it's nice for quick shading and it's also great because you can layer the opacity of the, um, of the color. So you can start out light and get a little hard, press down harder and harder to really fill in the color. Um, so I would kind of get rid of this one and you could have these two. Actually you could probably use your pencil as shading for now but um, I just find it's nice to have a different color gray so it doesn't just look like pencil. So as far as erasers go, these are four of the most popular ones and I'll think I've kind of spaced them from my favorite to my least favorite up here so I'll tell you why. So this is just a peanut uh, novelty eraser, not so great for actual professional sketching so and not so good to eat either so let's not do that. Now this next one is called a pink pearl. It's the same color and the same consistency and the same material as you would find on the end of a regular pencil like this one. Okay, um, the reason why I don't like this one is because of the color. It can sometimes leave a mark on the paper when you're erasing. So I'm not a huge fan of this one. Now. This one is a white eraser, so that kind of takes away any of the problems that the pink pearl was having. Um, this one's called High Ox Super Eraser. Um, the problem with this one, and it's just a small problem, but let's say I have my piece of paper here and I want to erase. Okay, one-handed erasing. <sighs> All right, so you can see here there's the eraser bits that kind of come off when you erase pencil away from something. Now. It's not a big deal, but when you're sketching all day and then you look and you have a desk full of eraser bits at the end of the day, I mean, it's not so great and it can be avoided with the magic eraser that I have right here. It's called a kneaded eraser and when you buy it, it doesn't look like this. It looks like a gray square. 
So the great thing about it is that you can mold it into whatever shape you need to mold it to. Like let's say you have to get in to a really fine area, you can really erase fine lines and it also doesn't leave any eraser bits and sometimes it looks like a duck or any other animal <laughs> when you're running out of ideas for sketching it's a nice little stress ball for you okay so my favorite is called a kneaded eraser okay so for markers you have quite a few options um, this first one here is a paper mate you can get this at any supermarket really and it comes in a two pack um, now this is a fine tip here we can show you the tip here and you'll see this first line now it's running out of ink so I'm sorry but um, the, it's a little bit thick but not too bad okay then the second option is called a hero marker um, it has one thick and one thinner line so it's got a thick point and also a fine point so that's a pretty good option too now my favorite option is called a micron pen. Um, it tends to be a little bit more of a technical pen. So it has a very fine tip and there's lots of different options for thicknesses here. So as you can see here it's 005, 01, 02, 03, 04 and a graphic one. Okay so I've also kind of made a little sheet here. As you can tell the difference between one, two, three, and four is not that great, so it just depends on how picky you are about um, your thickness of your line. Um, I tend to prefer the zero two, um, just kind of in the middle. It's a nice, it's a nice fine line, um, and I also use the zero zero five for stitching, sketching small details like sketch, stitching or buckles. Um, yeah, so if you were going to buy two, if you're serious about sketching, I would buy the 02 and the 005. Now I can show you one of these tips. So it's so fine, you can hardly see it, and I'm guessing I'm getting a little blurry here. But um, yeah, it's a really nice marker. Okay, now the last one I would suggest getting is kind of the same thing as the gray colored pencil, but it's a marker. So this one's a Prismacolor. I don't know why, I just stick to that brand. I like it a lot. It also has two tips. It has a fine tip and a heavy tip, but I tend to use the larger tip for shading. It's also good for quick shading. Um, now, I wouldn't suggest hand coloring sketches yet because that's also kind of a um, tricky thing to do. But this one's just good for like the shading under a heel or right beside a buckle if you wanted to get um, fancy <laughs> okay so this color here is called warm gray 30 percent um, and I've just kind of quickly you know marked up my paper with the marker and it's nice because it's not very heavy so you can kind of layer it you see here I did um, kind of a heavier feeling here and then it looks more like a watercolor on the other parts so it's kind of nice you know I would suggest getting any kind of light gray color um, I like warm grays but it doesn't have to be that for you guys so I'm thinking I might get a couple questions about my sketchbook so I just bought a couple of these because I really like them um, this sketchbook is called a note sketchbook and it's by Bien Fong um, made with recycled paper and I bought it at Dick Blick so you should be able to find it there as well it's just a it's a small notebook that I kind of keep around just to draw some quick sketches or um, you know just to get my ideas out as quickly as possible and then I'll kind of go back and and redo them so they look nice and pretty for everyone um, but the reason why I like it is that it has this big white space here that you can sketch and then it's got these small um, section with lines so you can take some notes like if you're um, going in stores to look for inspiration you can do a quick sketch and then write down the brand or write down the detail that you like or the materials that you like so uh, I just think it's a good option if you have any questions please let me know and um, the next tutorial is going to be about the foot template. So we'll see you soon.